Welcome to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as we figure out how to build and run a SaaS. I'm Brian. And I'm Benedict. Each week, we'll give you an honest peek into our lives as we work on our products and keep the lights on by making pizza again. <laughs> <laughs> Today is September 7th, and I'm excited. Nice. This is episode number 57, and I am feeling frazzled. Are you, sorry, are you making pizza again, or did we just forget to edit that part of the... Uh, of I the forgot episode? to edit that part, yeah, right on, right on. <laughs> but I should do some more pizza. Yeah, how, yeah, how, how is the pizza making going? Uh, it, yeah, I think I figured it out. Um, <laughs> like the last, the last batch, um, I was able to maintain the temperature uh, a little bit better. Yeah. And also figured out like how to not drench the entire neighborhood in smoke. <laughs> 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 because that first time, uh, I closed the lid too early and then <laughs> the wood stopped burning and just like was super smoky and uh, uh, yeah. Nice. A neighbor, a neighbor came and <laughs> asked if the house was on fire. Um, yeah, friendly, but, friendly, curious neighbor, or uh, yeah, friendly, okay. curious neighbor. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. So in the second time, uh, figured out to just like, yeah, wait until the wood's properly burning before closing the lid. Got it. Awesome. <laughs> and now, now it's it's a lot better. Um, Good. But yeah, Good. it's making progress. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. So, uh, what's got you? What's got you excited this week? Uh, the 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 refactoring got me excited because nice. it's, it's just working out. It's like one of those refactorings where things fall into place that were kind of out of shape before, and now it's just stuff is just magically working and clicking Easier. here and there. Yeah, it's a good feeling. So it's it's a super nice feeling, and I had a hard time. St- Stopping to work on it on Friday night uh, to to leave for a weekend. I uh, had this itching mm-hmm. in my fingers to get back into it because I knew yeah. this was working out really well. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I, those are the exciting times of doing software development when yeah. things just work. <laughs> Were you able to spin it right back up on Monday and feel that itchy excitement and keep it going? Yeah, for the most part, I made a lot of progress on Monday and even today. And um, yeah, UI is basically done, except for uh, uh, Jane's UI review that mm-hmm. hopefully isn't going mm-hmm. to be that bad. And um, right now, um, I'm working on the last uh, stuff on the on the backend side, like basically making sure the conversion of the old format into the new format works. And um, that's also done more or less uh, i'm currently running um validation like on the server uh basically running the generating the queries with the old the old format and check like getting the results and then comparing them to running the same the same query with the new data format and just making sure that yeah they, well, in yeah. theory they should yeah. both return the same result right and that's that's running like, as we speak uh, mm-hmm. on my uh, on my second screen and um what got me a little bit excited, but uh, I will be cautious about this, is the new queries are like up to eighty times faster. Whoa! But before, like that's maybe that's because I run the old queries queries first and then the the new queries after, oh. so the data might be in yeah. cache. Okay. But like once the validation is through and I'm sure that uh, everything's correct, I'll do some more measuring to see if mm-hmm. uh, the new stuff is actually faster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that will be exciting. Is, do you? I, I was uh, I was running into this last week or the week before. Um, and is there is there a like a benchmarking tool that you can use in Rails to output to the server log like this query? Or, the, or this page and this sequence of queries took, you know, 1.2 seconds. And then you make a bunch of changes. Okay, now it takes 0.4 seconds. I, I couldn't find like a straightforward way to do that. Do you know of something off the top of your head? Mm, Rails does some of it by default. Like in the in the default logs, there is some yes, totally. timing information in there. Yes. Yeah, totally. But like if there are, you know, 34 queries, I want a sum of all of them so that then I can kind of tweak them pull them out and see which one is yeah. taking the most time that sort of thing um if you want to sum like there there is a sum at the okay. end of the entire query 
but on on like in production it's usually well it's a mess because there are a bunch of queries <laughs> running at the same time and a bunch of requests at the same time um, and for that reason i'm using a gem called log rage log which, rage log rage yeah okay. and what this does is basically modifying this default rails logger to only ex like only output one line per request to the logs yes yeah and that way you get basically just like uh the path uh, that got hit the request method mm -hmm. response code and some of the timing information mm -hmm. and that makes it a lot easier to cool. to okay. work with the, with the log data okay cool i'll take a i'll take a look at that yeah that's um, definitely worth it <laughs> great cool what what else what else is going on um yeah, so uh, th that part, just, well, basically my work um, development-wise was was just on the refactoring. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a new month, um, we um, we did our growth dashboard update. We have a spreadsheet that basically where we collect all our metrics that are somewhat relevant to yeah to us, <laughs> and there's like stuff like visitors to the website, conversion rates. How much we spend on ads, um, how many signups we got, MRR growth, stuff like that is in there. And um, I updated that that spreadsheet. Uh, I think it was on Friday, and it was exciting to see that the stuff we we've been working on for the past months is actually working. So um, that's great. There's a there's significant growth in our MRR again, which is mostly because we canceled the, the nine dollar plan. Um, so that's working, uh, related to that, the trial to paid conversion rate is going down a bit, but I mean, yeah, now they, now people are converting to a, to a $50 plan before it was a, a $10 plan or $9 plan. So yeah, that's to be expected. Um, average revenue per customer is going up again, which is exciting. <laughs> and, oh, okay. uh, the, the part that got me most excited is that we got a lot more visitors to the website. Um, and that's been more or less the goal of the last couple of weeks, like redoing the website, um, mm -hmm. rolling the docs in there, getting a lot more content on the website that, that all seems to work out. Um, we also did a little bit of, well, well a little bit, we started to doing, started doing right like proper paid advertising, uh, and, um, Asia is mostly working on that and, and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. So that, that played some role in t in in that uh, we got more visitors, but it's also organic traffic is up as well. Um, and surprisingly, not not just to like rolling the docs in there, of course, had an effect, but not as significant in terms of visits to those those actual pages. But for some reason, like just the, the homepage gets a lot more organic traffic as well and i have no sh i'm not sure why <laughs> that's interesting huh. for some reason for some reason it does work <laughs> <laughs> how well um, uh so before you move on on the on the paid ad stuff i mean what's what's the mix of facebook google linkedin anything else like any anything to report um we are currently doing uh facebook and um Google Google search ads, mm -hmm. um, and I think Facebook is just doing retargeting at the moment. So people that have been on our website, okay, basically get to see it again and again. I think Asia is working on um, setting up a campaign uh, using lookalike audiences. Yeah, um, but I'm not sure if that's already running. We'll get an update on on that front um, tomorrow, um, and. Uh, on the on the search um, on the Google search advertising, um, one of the the learnings were was that um, getting the keywords right is <laughs> probably the most <laughs> most challenging part. Yeah, um, because like on one of the campaigns we got a like we got a bunch of traffic and a bunch of clicks, but it turned out the keyword was just just wrong, worthless. It, yeah, it, it was. Um, the campaign was about activation emails or something like mm. that. And turns out like all the clicks we got was from people looking for how do I activate my email account? <laughs> so, um, yeah. 
Yeah, totally Stunning. worthless traffic. <laughs> do you do you have any uh I mean, off the top of your head, do you know what you're paying per click in Facebook versus Google search? Um I don't I don't have the numbers at the top of my head. We didn't okay. uh, we didn't include those in the spreadsheet just yet, but mm -hmm. uh we'll do it for the for the next iteration or even retroactively. Um let me check. Maybe Jane already updated that part. Um, no, not yet. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. So uh, that's that part. Um, what else? So, well, so what? So what are you? Um, what are you all doing about the the keyword research side of things? How how is that list being built? Uh, how are you whittling it down? What's that? What's that whole strategy? Yeah, basically, and, and process um, I'm not entirely sure what process Asia herself is using, mm -hmm. but from the outside, it well, it basically looks like taking a good guess and then seeing and seeing then, what works and what doesn't work. And yeah. obviously, the activation emails uh, campaign didn't work mm -hmm. whatsoever. So we it, it's already disabled by now. Mm -hmm. um, what seems to be working is, um, I think it's onboarding emails or onboarding SaaS or something like that. And okay. um, onboarding tools seems to be working as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hope I'm not sharing too much information here. I mean, that <laughs> no, that that sounds that sounds to me uh, no surprise like, there. I guess right, right. There's a pretty good. There's a good. Uh, video I ended up watching from the guy who runs Ahrefs and it was ba it was you know it was talking about like the different stages of oh gosh what is it like informational discovery transactional you know and, and so on and like a batch of keyword you know a batch of words to attach to your keyword phrases you know for each of those and, mm -hmm. um so it's it sounds you know it doesn't sound like you're giving any anything uh, too, too crazy away there. I was, I think I was, I am kind of curious how, uh, how you were whittling down which ones are the most, um, the most likely to, to be worth experimenting with before you start putting money into them. And I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, we've been looking at HREFs and stuff like that, but I mean, similar to your sentiment from a couple episodes ago, it's hard to get good information out, out of the tool, at least for, it seems like for our tool in particular, it's mm -hmm. either, like it's either a super competitive keyword or it's, well, or there's no search traffic at all. <laughs> so there's no, there's no in between, well, long tail of sorts, I don't know, um, yeah. where it makes sense to, to put some ads on there or even like do some SEO for. Or then the, on the extreme side, there's like intercom alternative and stuff like that, where okay. yeah. there's just a lot of people trying to get in the, in the rankings and also doing a lot of paid ads on there. So yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's weird in that there's no, there's no clear answer, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, just experimenting with the terms that we have right now works so far. Yeah. Cool. Keep us posted. Um, yeah. Are, we'll so, do. so you uh, in the notes you did mention like some blog posts helped. So, how, how are you promoting those? Are those? Are, do you have like a flywheel going now so that your posts bubble up towards the top a little bit quicker? Or how, how are those? Um, we we did one blog post last month about uh, basically just a website relaunch and how we mm -hmm. bu rebuilt the docs. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure it makes a lot of sense to promote that a lot, mm -hmm. but to be honest, uh, same thing as always. We we wrote a post, published it, tweeted about it, yep. sent it to the mailing list, mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's um, for this post in particular. I'm not sure if it's worth uh, trying to promote it more, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, Jane is currently working on a basically a cluster page about uh, user onboarding that will be on on the website and then just like be a good guide for 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 people that go to the page but also be a good 
well, pool of links, internal links for search engines to pick up on. Um, and that's mostly written. I think she's still working on some uh, infographics and stuff like that. So we hopefully mm -hmm. will be able to publish that next week or so and then see how that goes. Um, yeah, nice. that's that's about it. Are all of your are all of your ads going towards the user list homepage, or are you sending some of those to landing pages where the conversion goal is download this free guide and and now you're in our email funnel? Right now, I think they're all going to the to the homepage, okay. except for one of the retargeting campaigns that promotes the the worksheets. Okay. Those go directly to the to the worksheets landing page. Um, but uh, Asia started talking about this late last week that she wanted to do like more custom landing pages for certain campaigns. Okay. So I think um, that will be something we'll be focusing on. Well, this either this week or early next week to get some more landing pages up. Um, and hopefully with the new website, it will be sweet and easy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, should be. Should be. At least that's the plan. I'm not totally cool. sure like what requirements she'll have on, on, on how they look or what, what should be on there. But by now we have like a library of 20 or so sections that we can compose together. So it should be, I think it should be fine. Yeah. Great. What's been up with you? Um, well, so yesterday, yesterday was a, uh, was Labor Day in the U.S. It's a holiday, and so the uh, the reason I was frazzled um, at the top of the show is we were driving home yesterday from the from the camping trip on what should be a two hour uh, drive, and so for like uh, we hit Labor Day traffic um, and are just like crawling along five miles an hour, stop and go, idling up you know, probably like mm. a five or 6%, you know, incline to try to get mm -hmm. to the top of the continental divide and then down. And our car, our van started overheating. Um, and so, uh, pulled over and ended up needing to get towed down. Um, and, uh, and got home after about six hours of what should have been a two hour drive. Um, but, but the, uh, it, good news is that we everybody is fine the co and and the car is fine and so uh, it was like oh man this was supposed to be just a nice uh, <laughs> like little thing but uh so so late late yesterday ended up uh ended up not being awesome yeah okay but, i can imagine uh, yeah so it turned, uh, at least it turned into an adventure for the kids i guess <laughs> yeah right exactly remember that time that you rode home getting towed behind a, a master <laughs> truck um, pulling our van with our pop-up camper attached to the back of our van. So it's quite the quite the train going down Interstate <laughs> 70. Um, so that was that was exciting, but all all good. Um, let's see. Uh, so after we recorded, you know, the last thing I said was I want to. I really want to get demo .headlamp .team launched. Um, so did a little bit of tinkering with that um and then sp ended up spending a, a good amount of time uh wednesday and thursday on on client work but was able to on friday i i mean pretty much get it i mean it's launched it's you know it's there at demo.headlamp.team i haven't started promoting it or anything just because i want to take a you know take another look to be sure that i've got all the you know all the bolts uh, tightened down and it can't actually send email that I don't want it to and, or any email at all for that matter. Um, and uh, started, I bounced that around um, in a couple of different uh, private messages with some prospects I've been talking to um, and trying to get some feedback on that uh, Slack, Slack group or two, just to get some feedback. And so I think I'll, I think I'll, you know, put a real effort this week into getting that in front of some more uh, in front of some more people um, and like probably go ahead and just start pointing traffic to it from the from headlamps marketing page um, and so we'll see if that you know helps to I guess uh, yeah I guess demonstrate a uh, demo hello uh, demonstrate a little bit better what it will be like you know when you when you have some data 
in there so that it's not just drop you mm-hmm. into a really empty experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know what's... Sorry, were you going to say something? Um, I just, I, I'm just clicking around in the demo again. And the one thing that I change is like have a big CTA on there to, yeah. to sign yeah. up. <laughs> totally. Yeah, for sure. Like a little, I mean, a, uh, you know, an, an onboarding, a couple of onboarding overlays and like a very obvious, you are in a demo account. Go here too. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I was trying to find the, I had two, I had two conversations, uh, after our, after our call last week where both people, I I wanted to get the exact quote, um, but I I can't, I can't find it right now. Um, and the person was like, yeah, I actually, I probably wouldn't give this a try if it weren't for the meetings, uh, feature. Um, because Mm. I was saying, oh, I'm getting ready to, you know, tear that out. I don't think anybody's really looking for that. I was like, oh yeah, if it were only the the check-ins, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't even sign up to give it a try. Mm. Um, and the other, and then the, uh, the another person said, oh yeah, okay, because they're like clicking around on the demo page now. They're like, oh, I, th- I actually think that this meetings over overview page where you can look back through your whole history and and see everything. This is probably the strongest, you know, the strongest part of it. I can see where. You know, there's a lot of value here and you can see everything is rolled into one place and it's not scattered across multiple Google Docs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they were, but they were not as, <clears throat> pardon me, they were not as black and white on, you know, I would not try it if it didn't do this. Um, and, uh, and we're a little bit like, wishy-washy on okay compared compared to your current solution of google docs like how big of a problem is that I'm like eh, probably like a six or a seven um which is not a nine or a ten so um definitely kind of downgrading that piece of feedback but just because at this early point where every you know qualitative data point is super uh super influential there's at least two votes there to say, okay, maybe don't promote the meetings thing um, or make it like the the lead. Um, but it did it did make me at least hesitate to say, okay, well, I don't have to, I'm not going to kill it just yet. Let's mm-hmm. let's wait just a minute. Um, so those were the those were the big, you know, main the main things I had going on last week. I definitely, I, f- I, re- I definitely feel like I need a better sales process, because um, like my f- my follow up, uh, Steli FD would be really disappointed in my in my <laughs> in my follow up right now, um, and so I gotta I gotta be tracking those conversations and uh, a little bit better right now than just some like Notion you know template that I'm using. Um, that I don't go to often enough. So that's, I think that's my big a couple, couple, the couple big takeaways for me, start promoting the pushing more traffic to the, to the demo, make sure that it has a clear CTA back to the actual <laughs> purchasable item, work on my work on my sales CRM, which is to say, get one. And uh, yeah, I think I want to like to uh, publish a couple more, um or uh fi- finish finish the keyword research uh stuff that I'd been doing to really just nail down okay here's the next long form piece that I'm going to work on and and promote so do you have any any new insights on how to do the keyword research um nothing n- nothing like groundbreaking um really it's it was a little bit i think it it, it felt a little bit frustrating because i signed up for an hrefs trial mm-hmm. um and the disparity in numbers between uh man goals and hrefs was like orders of magnitude mm. and so that that felt a little bit like yeah man <laughs> this is black magic like yeah. th- th- 
there's there is directional information in here, but um and I should, you know, like follow those those breadcrumbs of of information, but this is not a hard science still. Mm-hmm. And so what are the what are the topics that or at least it 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 seems like that most of the time. I'm sure that there are examples of people who find and identify a high traffic transactional low competition keyword and that has a material impact on their business. I am 100% sure that that happens many 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 times. But 99 times for each one of those it feels <laughs> like oh yeah we kind of actually just stumbled up. we never we had no idea that this post would do so well and it drives all this traffic etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. um and so then it just feels like ah oh, crud like i don't want to be into the in a numbers game of just throwing 50 posts against the wall like that feels like i've heard that that advice is no good you need to be you know focused and specific and targeted that's what i'm trying to do but then you see these huge disparities and you're like mm. uh, I'm not sure. It's, I, I don't know. You can trust it. Yeah. Yeah. So, In the end, it comes down to just uh, guessing. <laughs> at least educated, educated guessing. And maybe that's what I'm, what I'm, if, if there is any big insight, like that has changed over the past couple of weeks, it's that realization that you're only ever going to be able to make an educated guess, but at least make it educated and there is no guarantee that the numbers that you're looking at are, are true. Yeah. Um, so that just, I guess that just feels a little bit disheartening. I was, I was hoping <laughs> for some certainty in this area, like this skill that I feel like I've been like low, like short on and turns out, oh yeah, no, actually there's, there's not as much of a huge <laughs> eure- <laughs> eureka moment on the way as you thought. So yeah yeah anyway, but whatever uh that's the nice thing about like writing code it either works or it doesn't <laughs> work <laughs> yeah yes it either works or it doesn't um whereas yeah what i mean i can spend 20 hours this week writing articles and maybe they maybe they mean something maybe they don't yeah 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 but yeah that's not to say that writing code actually moves the needle for the business that's probably a different discussion but i feel like um yeah i have like as you said i have a hard time like doing those things where it always feels like taking educated guesses it's uh it just frustrates me mm-hmm. <laughs> quite a bit because you never know like yeah where you're going with it are you just mm-hmm. wasting a bunch of time or are you actually making progress yeah and they it has the i mean con- like creating content and giving it time to start to work what's really hard about it is a lot like dieting or working out mm. that you don't you don't notice change for a couple of months and then you notice a small amount of change and then a little bit more and then oh holy moly you're looking at pictures of yourself from 10 years ago and you're like wow that's a lot of difference yeah. um and so I think what feels, yeah, it just feels a little bit frustrating or different to not know for sure. Well, what should I, what exercises should I be doing? Mm -hmm. Um, So that, that still feels uncertain to me, but I'm like, F it. Like um, I'm, I'm picking a few this week and I am doing them. Um, Cause something is like, yeah, just sitting here and, you know, Doing nothing is definitely is the, the wrong. Yes, yes, the exactly. wrong thing to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, anyway, would still, yeah, I'm still open to. Uh, I've gotten a number of like tweets and uh, Slack messages with a few articles, and I've been really appreciative of that. So, thank you to all of you who have uh, reached out with that. Super, really helpful in continuing to you know push me down um, towards some sort of conclusion. So, thanks a whole lot. It's really like the best part of yeah doing this yeah doing awesome this yeah that's cool to hear um in the notes you, you wrote something that um you're seeing a lot more or well a couple more backlinks to uh, yeah. i guess the, the yeah the book or the guide uh you wrote yeah yeah my my wife is like just running through this 
outreach process and I'd say one out of 10 so far have resulted in adding a link or them saying, oh, hey, yeah, um, is, is there a part in the article that you that, and that, that you think that it would be a good link? I was like, well, I, yeah, yeah, we said that in the first email. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and so it's like, cool, here's, you know, here's 100 words. Um, add it to, you want to add it to your post. Um, and a couple other, you know, good leads for just setting up a, a guest post, you know, that would be relatively easy for me to, you know, punch out 600 words and, and get a post up. So that's, I mean, I, I would say that that, that part of it does feel, um, you can put a process around generating backlinks um, in a good nature, or like in a mm-hmm. completely above board, good natured way. That is, that's working. Um, it's just gonna take take time yeah, and effort. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure if you if you uh, told us uh, last week, but how do you did how did you get that list of uh, yeah okay. people to contact? I um using a backlink tracker or backlink miner, I think it's called in the in Mangles tool. Mm. Um, I searched for you know uh, employee engagement which would be a great keyword to rank for, but I never could, or I, I won't for a while. Let's be optimistic about it in that way. And then take the top 10 results and then put those results into backlink uh, miner. And so any, like then find, you know, 15 to 20 of the uh, top um, link score is how Mangles uses or calls it. I don't know how Ahrefs does. And so the 15 or 20 that are linking to that number one, number two, number three, number four, and so on, um, build up that list and then reach out to those publications to say, Hey, you're linking to this piece. It's a great piece. We've written, you know, 9,400 words of more up-to-date content and blah, 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 blah. And Mm. basically say you're you're linking to this because it's super helpful. Here's something that has even more content that I think your audience would love. Okay, it's just so so basically the 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 standard thing that lands in your yes. inbox, but ninety percent of the time it's totally yeah. unrelated. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, and and like I think number I think email three in our process is even that. Like I get these all the time, and I get it. Um, so, uh, but this is why I this is why I think you should pay attention to this. This is actually good. Um, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I could go on about those emails forever. <laughs> I, I have, yeah, I, I think, I, oh man, I don't know if I want to go down this road. Um, <laughs> I, I have two major pet peeves on, uh, or two, two of my major pet peeves on Twitter are people who complain about recruiters and or not not people who people who but when people complain about recruiters and when people complain about sales emails um Mm -hmm. because uh both of those things if that shows up as a nuisance you are in a very good situation so um that's 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 true yeah (laughs) you're you're right about that (laughs) that's why i am very nice to recruiters and don't complain about sales emails and also don't mind sending them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good mindset. <laughs> it just it just sometimes it's hard when you notice that the email is totally like yeah. Yes, no doubt. Bad bad Ooh. sales emails and bad recruit <laughs> yeah. bad recruiter emails are more annoying than good ones. And there are yeah, more of sure. them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But still. Yeah. But still. Uh, Won't always of those- yeah. One of those, uh, we recently got an email some, for, from someone asking for a backlink. Um, mm-hmm. And they are specifically talking about the blog post where we describe how we do user onboarding at UserList. So it's already very specific to UserList. And they, even from that standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of sense to include other resources in there. So that's the first one. The yep. second one was um, their content piece was about employee onboarding. So, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah it was, it wasn't Not, a good fit in like in in two in two, uh, in two aspects, yeah, yeah. and um, 
those are just like those are just annoying and yeah yeah like we, we, are. we don't yeah we don't uh, uh reply and uh are super um upset about it but like yeah then if you if you decide to ignore them you're just like going to get a couple more so usually we reply something like yep. hey this doesn't look like a good fit and yep hopefully be yeah. done with it uh, but uh yeah those are annoying that's that's all, all i have to say about that yeah <laughs> yeah part part of it so yeah for sure cool anything else uh not from my side yeah me me, me either um okay well good yeah. good catching up we'll for sure see you, see you next week yep see you next week all right later all right